Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of Format Podcast Live. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So um, this week's been a crazy week in terms of uh, when I'm dropping shows and uh, when I'm giving you guys the content that I normally do. But, um, you know, things come up and then you got the holiday week and all this kind of stuff going on. And so um, I wasn't sure what my schedule is going to look like uh, later later today. Today is Wednesday, obviously, day before Thanksgiving. So I wanted to make sure that I got on here and um, gave you guys the content that you normally get from me, <clears throat> excuse me, on a Wednesday. So I said, all right, let me let me get in here early. Let me go ahead and uh, deliver this and uh, drop the show. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, hopefully we get some people in here in the chat. I know it's a, a very odd time, totally different from when I normally do it, but at least uh, for those who don't catch it live, you'll be able to see the replay, uh, you know, later today or if you want to watch it tomorrow or whenever that may be. So uh, at least I will have the opportunity to uh, to get this out to you guys. Again, don't know uh, what my schedule is going to look like later today, but I wanted to make sure that I got this content out to you. So we got some uh, we got some good stuff. I appreciate anybody who's uh, who's um, showing up here this morning. It's not that serious. What's good, bro? Haven't seen you in a while, man. Pleasure to see you back in the back in the chat. Um, but yeah, anyone who's uh, anyone who's uh, uh, checking in, I appreciate you. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate that. Helps the show grow. Helps the YouTube algorithm push it out to uh, more people who uh, may want to listen and uh, make sure you hit that share button as well. Share button is powerful. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to drop my little spiel and then we'll go ahead and get going. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, make sure you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm. Do whatever you got to do to remember Saturday nights at 7 p.m. We are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in. Talk to us. Get at me. I love it. I can't. Um, and we will go to the topic of the NBA All-Star game and the new format. So, all right. Obviously, <laughs> I get accused very often of being an old head and being a hater and not respecting the guys who play today, not respecting what the league is today and not understanding that it's different. And I just have to accept that. Yeah. I acknowledge that I have to accept it because it's never going to go back to what it once was, but to say that it's better and the games today are better and the quality of play is better and the players today are better. Well, that's just a flat out lie. And if you watch this show again, or if you know me, you hear, con you hear me, excuse me, constantly lamenting the state of basketball, which was a sport that I loved so much um, for, uh, you know, so much of my life, you know, basically from b before I hit double digits in age all the way till I was probably, you know, like 30 years old, 35 years old. And football always came second to me. But then when I saw what was happening to basketball, that actually flipped. So now for me, it's NFL and college football and then basketball after that. Right. So especially, you know, you, you've seen the way college basketball has gotten watered down. The best talent is out very quickly, even if they go. So it's very hard to, um, you know, stay engaged with basketball players in college or basketball teams in college. And then, you know, you see with the NBA consistently getting younger and younger, the quality of play is actually worse because the guys don't understand the game as well. And then uh, you have coaches and analytics people who have dumbed the game down to basically uh, dunks or three pointers. So you got every game darn near come, turning into a three point contest with NBA teams averaging 35 to 37 three point attempts per game. That's not basketball. It's a three point shootout. Then on top of that, you got um, guys making so such exorbitant amounts of money. And again, I'm not, I'm not hating on anybody getting their money. I get that. But when guys are making that much money, it's so difficult for guys to have the competitive fire and the competitive nature of yesteryear. That doesn't seem to exist anymore. Uh, guys want to team up. Guys want to be buddy, buddy. You got um, you have all this going on and it has uh, decreased the quality of play. Also, you have defense which has effectively been legislated out of the game uh no more physicality so guys can pretty much do whatever you want so you have all these uh inflated statistical production from these so-called great all-time offensive players then you have the officiating which is terrible guys literally being allowed to carry guys being allowed to travel so you have all this stuff going on and yet 
you know, the younger fans are trying to convince me that this is a better product. Well, it's not. It's not. And that's not me hating. Again, that's me having the benefit of multiple decades of sitting back watching the NBA to be able to uh, use as reference points. Right. OK, cool. So you got all that going on. Now I'm going to say something else that I'm sure will be taken as hating, but I'm used to it and I don't care because um, we can look at the evidence there, whether you view it as empirical or circumstantial, the evidence is there. And what am I referring to? I'm referring to our guy again, LeBron James. And is it coincidence he entered the league in 2003 and since about 2004, 2005, the quality of play has consistently decreased? Is it coincidence? Is it coincidence that uh, his um, his team hopping and uh, uh, team super team building and his manipulation of rosters and, and, and his whining and complaining and all of this stuff has coincided perfectly with the decline of the quality of play. Is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence that his presence and all the stuff he does has coincided perfectly with the decline in the quality of play of the all-star game? Is it coincidence? Is it? Is it coincidence that his refusal to compete in the NBA all-star game has made it cool and acceptable for other elite athletic players in the league and high flyers to not compete in the NBA All-Star game, thus making the All-Star game basically an afterthought of All-Star weekend when previously it was, you know, the, the glamour event. Is that coincidence? Is it? Is it? Now you're going to call me a hater for saying that, but it all lines up perfectly with LeBron and his influence on the league. Just something to think about. You can argue all you want, but it's all there. Anyway, here's the deal. So the, the all-star game for the last few years has been absolutely horrendous, you know, and, and that basically um, that comes to last year where uh, I think combined the all-star game scored over 400 points, right? No NBA game should have over 200 points scored for any team. That is absurd. That's absolutely absurd. What does that mean? Guys weren't even trying. Adam Silver knew this. And prior to the All-Star game last year, I think he had Larry Bird and Dr. J go into the locker rooms and really try to convince guys to go out there and compete. One, if I'm an NBA player, how do I feel? How do I look at myself in the mirror knowing that Dr. J and Larry Bird, two of the greatest to ever do it, have to come into my locker room as an All-Star and try to convince guys to play hard? Try to convince guys to play hard? Really? Really? Is that is that what that that's where we are now? You have no pride? You have no competitive fire like this is disgusting what we saw. And honestly, the only reason I even watch this stuff is because I have to cover it. Right. The love for the game has so badly dissipated within me. It's going to take a miracle to get it back. But I just don't think it's ever going to happen. Right. Adam Silver, he's not going to be the guy that makes the necessary moves to bring the NBA back to the level that it once was. He's not going to allow the physicality. Why? One, because if he does that and brings back defense, it's going to expose all these so-called great players that we're calling, you know, among uh, the the all-time greats. What's up, Steve? Nah, this is live, bro. This is live, man. Um, uh, You probably didn't catch the beginning, but the reason I'm on it so early is because I had a lot of things going on and uh, stuff probably going on later for the holidays, and I wasn't sure I'd be able to get on tonight. So I wanted to make sure I um, dropped you guys some content here on Wednesday like you used to. So uh, I appreciate you stopping in, brother. Um, Yeah, so when it comes to uh, Adam Silver, I think he's probably the worst commissioner in sports. He's he's too... He's too much in bed with the players in terms of trying to make everybody happy, right? He's he's that parent that gives the kid ice cream for breakfast, right? And then gets mad when the kid doesn't know how to act, right? You don't, you can't, uh, you can't not have any discipline. You can't not set guidelines. You can't do all these things and then expect that you're going to have the product that you want, man. You cannot allow the players to run everything and expect that and expect that you're going to get the product that you want. It's just not. That's not how things work, right? And that's not how intelligent people move. Now, one thing I will say, one thing I will say for all of this complaining I'm doing about the league, and not just me, a lot of people, for all of this, we can say that the league continues to make money. The, this last TV deal was it 11 years, $76 billion. So clearly people are watching. Clearly people are watching. Or the TV deal is just a function of like, you can't not have live sports, right? If you're a TV carrier. Now that said, Here's the flip side of it. A lot of the money that the league is making, because it's not making that much money domestically because uh, college football and the NFL are running laps around it as a domestic product. But guess who is the largest consumer of the NBA globally? China. 
right? So they're making tons of money in China. They're making a lot of money in Europe. And now they're really starting to get into mining Africa, both for players and for, you know, uh, fan engagement. So that's why the NBA is so invested in this global game because of the money, because they know that they have fallen well behind domestically. So if you've fallen behind domestically, you got to get it internationally. And the NBA has done a great job of doing that. I can't front on that. But it, Adam Silver is still the worst commissioner because just because he's following through on David Stern's dream of taking the game global and really expanding it on that front, which he's continuing to do a tremendous job, he's also allowing the product to turn to garbage. And so that is what that is. Anyway, back to the All-Star game. So uh, Adam Silver and the league and, the and and you know, they've been trying for years now to figure out how do we make the all-star game relevant before it ends up like the NFL pro bowl? How do we make the, uh, how do we make people care about the all-star game again? How do we make these players care about the all-star game again? I think Shea Gilgis Alexander last year, they asked him like, how do you do that? And he suggested some type of monetary prize. I'm like, really? You're already making tens of millions of dollars every season. And you got the nerve to say a monetary prize. If there's another part, you're not going to play any harder. You just don't want to. Right. Uh, Steve said this comes down to the ideology of how hierarchies within institutions work. The current NBA has no order, meaning that correct, Steve. Absolutely. The players are running the league. Yup. And I agree with you one thousand percent. That's why I think Adam Silver is a terrible commissioner. Um, now, does he have to be like Roger Goodell? Not quite. But David Stern, I think, was the best commissioner in NBA history. Some people say and there's some truth to that, that um, when did David Stern become the commissioner? I, I want to say 84. So he basically caught lightning in a bottle, right? He walks into the league as a commissioner when uh, Magic and Bird are at their peak. Uh, 84 was the first time Magic and Bird played in the NBA finals against one another. So that was huge. And they had already by then been in the league five years and started taking it by storm. And then, of course, uh, Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon, uh, Charles Barkley, I believe John Stockton. John Stockton all got drafted in 1984, right? So some of the greatest players that we've ever seen all came into the league in 94. And then throughout the rest of David Stern's tenure, obviously you got guys like Allen Iverson and Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett and Kobe Bryant and uh, Patrick Ewing and David Robinson. So many of the all-time, all-time greats came into the league during the same time that David Stern was there. So he was able to ride that way. So I, I totally get it. Um, let's see. Uh, Nino says, I disagree with you, my brother. This was 85% media. Um, not really sure what you mean by that. You could put it in the chat. And uh, if you can, once I open up the phone lines after this segment, you give me a call and, and let me know. Um, I disagree. This was 85% media. Not really sure what you mean. But at the end of the day, um, the, I, I just think the, the league and the All-Star game is in a terrible place. So anyway, Shea Gilgis says, you know, offer some higher level monetary compensation. He didn't use those words, basically like more money. Um, for the winners. And nah, man, you already getting tons of bread. We shouldn't have to pay you even more to try and get you to want to compete. But again, I will bring it up. LeBron James has definitely, definitely played a major role in removing or reducing the level of competitive fire and competitive fervor in the NBA. There's no question about that. Um, Let's see. Uh, Steve says the players should be subordinates. The coaches can't coach. Players are making so much money. There's not leverage on behalf of the franchise to impose order. Correct. Correct. Now, the NBA has always been a player's league, but not to this point. It was only like a few players who were like superstar level, your Magics, your Birds, your, you know, your Jordans. And most of those guys didn't even really flex unless they absolutely had to. You almost never saw it. But um, again, that's also coming from an era where there was order throughout society on the whole. And these guys, you know, they respected coaches and whatnot, things like that. But that's that's a whole nother topic to get into. So let's do this. I've been kind of giving the background on why the NBA is so bad and where it is now in terms of the All-Star game and all that. And so there is a new uh, All-Star game format that's come out, which I think is totally absurd. But let's listen to uh, the first take crew, Kendrick Perkins, Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp. Talk about that. Now, um, I'm going to give you a quick warning. This clip is about five minutes long, so just be ready for that. Then we'll come back and talk about it. Then we got another shorter clip from uh, Gilbert Arenas on Gil's Arena talking about the new all-star layout. I hate it. It's a complete waste of time. Um, I abhor it. I think it's a it's an insult and it's a disgrace uh, to to pioneers who have helped elevate the NBA product to what it is. I think it's a blemish on NBA players. Um, 
I personally have no interest in even being there. And I never speak against the NBA this way. I'm not where I am in my life if it were not for the NBA. The NBA has done wonders for me. And I don't blame the league office for this at all. Kendrick Perkins, Shannon Sharp, you know, y'all are both former professional professional players. Y'all know what I'm about to say. This is on the players, man. You know, and, and I've said this on a thousand occasions, and I've said this on a thousand occasions, and I'll say it again. This is the ultimate indictment against the NBA players. They play harder practicing in the summer league. Now, what possible excuse could you have for playing harder practicing amongst yourselves in the summer league than you are in an exhibition game where stars descend from all over the country, if not all over the world, to come and watch you play in an exhibition. No, you don't have to go at each other like you do in a regular season. You don't have to go at each other like you do in the playoffs. But you could show some semblance of effort. They don't do it. When they changed the format and had, you know, like a Team LeBron versus a Team Steph or somebody. Remember in 2018 when the Team LeBron won yes. one like 148, 145, and LeBron put on the show score that with a left hook in the lane for him and, uh, and KD trap Steph. You saw the energy, the adrenaline, and all of that other stuff. They cared, and everybody applauded them. And what did they do? They went about the business of rewarding the fans after that by basically, figuratively speaking, giving them the finger. They haven't given a damn about the NBA All-Star. And Adam Silver and the NBA has, league office has tried everything, conversations with everybody and their grandmother about modifying this because he has spoken out against it. Former players have spoken out against it. Hall of Famers have spoken out against it. Hell, Chris Paul was the executive director of the play. I'm sorry, president rather of the Players Association. And when he was there in that position, he spoke out against it. It's embarrassing. And the fact that they have to go through this just to gain interest is the ultimate indictment against players who are played paid generational money and you can't show up for an all-star game to show a modicum of effort. It's a disgrace. It really is. Steven, I, I don't disagree with one thing that you said. Is it asking too much for you guys to show a little interest? I remember having the same conversation. They did the same thing with the Pro Bowl. And I said, eventually, the owners and the commissioner is going to get tired of this. You can't play two-hand touch. It's tackle football. And what did they do, Stephen? They, they cut it out, and now they have a skills challenge. At some point in time, it's not asking you guys to play a little a little hard with a little effort. I'm not saying you got to play like it's game seven. Hell, I'm not even saying you got to play like it's summer league. But you got to give us more than this. 200 points in an NBA game when everything is a three or dunk. Ain't nobody trying to do anything else other than shoot a three or dunk the basketball. It's embarrassing. And if you're a current player that, go, that went to the All-Star game within the last five years, this is on you. The problem with the league, and Adam Silver, in my opinion, is the best commissioner in sports. If anybody feel otherwise, we could debate that for another day. He has done everything in his power to make guys compete, right? You think about over the past five seasons, the problem is, is this. Let me say this. This generation of players are spoiled and soft, okay? Okay. Adam Silver in the NBA has put in the in-season tournament. They put in the play-in tournament. And now they're reconstructing the All-Star game, right? Because guys are not competing. And it is an indictment on all the players. It has nothing to do with the people that's in the front office at the NBA and Adam Silver. When you think about just this season alone, I didn't heard Jay Kidd call his players out early in the season in the press conference for not competing. I didn't heard J.J. Reddick. He just called the Lakers out, said the spirit was there, the lack of the lack to compete was there. I didn't heard so many coaches call their players out about competing that it's a damn shame. So when you hear former players complaining, it's because you they're disrespecting the former players. That laid, the, that laid it out for the guys today to be getting paid 30, 40, 50, 60 million dollars. And they're not doing what they supposed to do so the next generation could get paid those type of dollars. This is why fans don't want to watch the NBA because they know guys are not going to compete. There you go. You heard it. It's the same thing I've been saying. The issue is competition. The issue is competition. They've made it easier than ever 
for these dudes to make tons and tons of money. Again, not hating on the fact that they're getting their bread. Go get that. You know, these owners are making a killing. Uh, the TV contracts keep uh, increasing. So get your money. However, with that money, man, get, go out there and give the fans a show. Compete. It's it's really absurd. Um, Quick note. Uh, Nino says, um, <laughs> Steve says, rare perk W. Yeah. Well, you know what? He, he had some of the W's there, Steve, but he didn't when he said Adam Silver is the best commissioner in sports. So, you know, two things can be true, right? Um, so when Nino said earlier, he said this was 85% the media, and we asked him to expand. If you didn't see it, he expanded in the chat. And he says, I wanted to respond to this. It was the media that started saying they only care about and judge players by rings. They started uh, That started to water down the break. They started downplaying the regular season. So here's my deal. Two things can be true. I always say that. There is some truth to that, um, Nino. But it's not about that for everybody. I think what they were doing, first of all, if you've been around this show for a while, you've heard me say time and time again that it's a lazy argument to boil down this faulty, fake goat debate just to rings, 6-0, six, oh, six MVPs. No, 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 no. Way more to it than that. Uh, Michael Jordan. Anyway, we're not going to get into the goat debate. But the point is you've heard me say multiple times that it's super lazy to water it down just to six rings, six MVPs. Cool. But – Six finals MVPs anyway. But no, here's the deal. It's not that the media watered it down just to that. But what happens is when you have a debate for the so-called greatest of all time, then you start having to, these things have to matter, right? There's no way that you could say, um, uh, what's an example? A, a lot of the older people, right? People older than me and the generation prior to me, generations prior to me will say that Wilt Chamberlain is the greatest of all time. They said, boy, you don't know how incredible Wilt was. Right. And if Will wanted to, he could have put like every stat that they were keeping at the time out of reach. Right. I think they said that um, if they had kept blocks, he would have averaged like eight blocks for his career or something absurd like that. But anyway, the point is, there are people who say that. But why don't we say that about Will? Very simply because he didn't win enough. And when you're that great, all these things start to come into the mix. It's not only about rings, but they're going to say that he didn't win enough. So. We can't necessarily boil it down to, oh, the media is just saying it's all about rings. No, no, no. Because to get to the ring, right, you have to do all the other things. So you know that Bird and Magic and Mike and Zeke and all these dudes, they wanted to ring bad as hell at the end of the season. But they also knew what it took to get there. And they cared about not just getting the ring at the end. I mean, that was the ultimate. That was the end all be all. But they also cared about being the best possible players that they could be. They cared about. Uh, if I'm Bird, they cared about when I go up against Magic, I want to show everybody I'm better. And Magic, you know, was feeling the same thing about the Bird. I want to show everybody I'm better. You you can, um, if you read the book When the Game Was Ours, or you read uh, the book, um, uh, what is it? Uh, is it Showtime by Roland? No. But anyway, there, there's um, a few different books I've read about Magic Johnson. And Magic Johnson won the MVP as a rookie, right? Not the MVP, I'm sorry. He won the finals. He won the championship as a rookie, right? Walked in. We all know the story. Game six, Kareem is down uh, 42, 15 and seven wins the championship as a rookie. And that's great because these guys love winning. But he was still burned up that people thought Bird was better than him and that Bird won rookie of the year. He thought he should have got it right. So it's not just about rings and the great players know that the great players cared about the competition. I want to show everybody I'm better. I want to beat that guy. That doesn't seem to exist anymore even though those guys were getting a ton of money at the time, you know, relevant to cost of living and what life was back then. Anyway, back to this um, uh, NBA all-star game format. Um, so uh, Perk, Stephen A., Shannon, they all said it. If this keeps up, Shannon made a very valid point. If this keeps up, the NBA all-star game is eventually going to go the way of the NFL Pro Bowl because nobody's going to watch, no one's going to care, and that's just going to be such an embarrassment on the league. Stephen A. said it right. It's an indictment of the players and their modern and their mentality. Perk said it right. Guys don't want to compete. All right. So I'm going to play a clip real quick of um, Gilbert Arenas on his show talking about this new format. And then when I come back, I'm going to give the very simple answer of how to fix the all-star game, make guys compete without offering them more money and make it a better product. All right. And, and it's too easy. I can't believe no one is saying it. Shams is reporting the NBA is considering a new format for the 2025 All-Star Game at the Chase Center in the Bay Area. So it'll be a new four-team tournament for the 2025 All-Star Game. It consists of three teams of eight All-Stars each and the winner of the Rising Stars game. Sources said league officials discussed the concept 
in a competition committee meeting this past Friday. So there will be still 24 All-Stars selected, 12 from each conference. The 24 All-Stars will be broken up into three teams of eight players each and will also include the winner of the Rising Stars game to create a four-team tournament. They had this farm format in the Rising Stars game, right? Oh. It, wasn't, it wasn't the worst, but... <laughs> But the fuck is the rising stars in there for? Because <laughs> they hungry, Gil. They trying to get that bread. It's rising stars. I mean, it's first first and second year players playing against real all-stars, and you think they have a chance? Like just Zachary Reese. How yeah. many how many how many players is it? It's 12 and 12, right? Yes, sir. Won't the fuckers just do six, 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 and six? Uh, not- won't they just do fucking six on each team, play a fucking quarter? Like, like who's who's making up the shit y'all got? How about this? <laughs> have a prize at the end of every quarter. Ta-da. You say a prize? Prize, like for the for the team, the team that it, wins the quarter. Two hundred thousand oh. for the team that wins the first quarter. <coughs> Awarded. Second quarter. Team who wins the second quarter. Two hundred thousand. Third quarter. Fourth quarter. Which means every quarter is playing very hard because they want the two hundred thousand. Mm, yeah. So according to report- then whoever wins the most quarters, you can give them extra bonus. And then if it's two two, fuck it. <laughs> Whoever had the most points. Overtime. Uh, right. It's 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 come Good on. Death. So reports say that Steph Curry and other All Stars had input on the idea as well. Does that change your opinion of it? Dumb. Damn. Yeah. I, I, I'm, okay. Listen. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steph. I'm playing. I'm playing against LeBron James. Fair. Right. Bronny potentially. I'm playing against. <clears throat> All right. Giannis. I'm playing against Giannis. Right. And, and, and then I'm. Playing against Sachet? Yeah. Right, I'm playing against the rookies. Like I'll leave Sachet. Sophomore game, that's who I'm gonna be playing against. Like, why? Like, if I'm not playing hard against this group, why the fuck am I gonna play hard against this one? It, that doesn't make any sense. So people are losing the forest for the trees here, man. People are really losing the forest for the trees on this. Um, they're getting all riled up. Gil is talking about offering more money. More money is not gonna make these guys play hard. I got the solution. I'll tell it to you in a second. But quick note. Uh, All-Star game. This is something I thought about that I'm really scared of, and I really hope it doesn't come to pass. But with with these freaking NBA fans today, it might, right? So I just uh, heard something yesterday. I was watching uh, Dreamers Pro Show. Shout out to Charles and Dreamers Pro. Y'all do really good work, man. Uh, If you're not subscribed there, subscribe over there. But anyway, not right now, uh, after this show is over. (laughs) But anyway, um, yeah, so Charles did a show, and he was talking about how it's estimated that Bronny James's jersey is going to surpass LeBron James in sales. What the hell has Bronny James done for people to want to buy his jersey? I mean, do you want to wear a jersey that says loser on the back? Do you want to buy a jersey that says bum on the back? Because that's what you're essentially doing if you get a Bronny James jersey. What the hell is wrong with you? Like, what is wrong with these people? This is what I talk about. But but I'm the hater. <laughs> but I don't know what I'm talking about. But Bronny James's jersey is about to start, is, is estimated to outsell LeBron. That's crazy. But anyway, here's the deal. Why I brought up Bronny. If his jersey is about to do that, does anyone think there's a legitimate chance that these crazy people could vote him into the All-Star game? <laughs> it could happen. It could freaking happen. And if that, man, look, if that happens, I don't even know. Again, that would be a dream for Nike and a dream for the league. But it would be so utterly disgusting for him to take uh, take a slot from someone deserving because these idiots out here, all these people who want to buy his jersey say, you know what, let's let's vote Bronny into the All-Star game. I, I, I don't even know what I would do. I don't know what I would do. I, well, I know what I would do. I would have to watch it and I would have to cover it. But it would be absurd. It would be ridiculous and it would be disgusting. And I would expect nothing less from the modern NBA fan. It, it would be terrible. You're laughing, Nino. You're laughing, but I mean, th- there is a legitimate possibility that this could happen. All right. Um, back to the topic, and I'm going to give you my solution for fixing the All Star game. Then I'm going to open up the phone lines. Hopefully, I get a couple calls on this one. All right. Here it is. Very simple. Do it like baseball. The winner gets home court advantage in the finals. Oh my gosh. This is so freaking easy. Winner gets home court advantage in the finals. You don't think dudes are going to play hard for that? It's not money that's going to make them play hard. It's that they don't have the competitive fire, but they will play hard for that because most all-stars, most all-stars, there's a few that are not, but most of them are on good teams. And if they can get home field advantage, home court through the play in the finals, they would play hard for that. That's what you need to do. It's that simple. 
I don't know why nobody has brought this up. I don't know what the hell Steph Curry and whoever the other players are that said, uh, let's come up with this crazy new 14 tournament format crap. I, I don't I don't know what's going on here. Um uh <laughs> oh, man, yeah, Steve. Um, yeah, man. Uh Steve says, I'll never be surprised on how insane the cult of LeBron can be. This very well may be a possibility to see Bronny in an all-star game. That would again, I used to love basketball, especially the NBA, so much. It would really hurt me if I saw that. And and, and that's how we would know it's it's all phony. It's all phony. All right, but anyway, um, back to what I was saying. Yeah. Home court advantage in the NBA finals to the winning conference. That's how you do it. That's how you fix the all-star game. That's how you make guys play hard. That's simple. We don't come up with stupid new formats and stupid new concepts and try to throw it up against the wall and see if it sticks. It doesn't work. That whole uh, taking it to the park, Team LeBron versus Team Giannis, you guys pick your teams and televise the the picks and all that. No, that, that, that didn't work. Then you went back to the regular thing and you begged the legends to go in there and talk to these guys and beg them to play hard. No, that didn't work. Now you come up with this four team crap. That's not going to work either. Home court advantage in the NBA finals for the winning conference. That's going to get it done. All right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the phone lines right quick. Um, Kevin Jones, what's up, my man? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Let me throw your comment up here. Yeah, absolutely, Kev. Um, you're right, though, man. If, if, if you've said it, I don't know if you've said it on this platform before, but, you know, shouts to you for that. It's too simple. And I don't know why uh, why the NBA doesn't want to go to that. But anyway. Uh, yeah. So so let's do this, man. 904-219-8264. 904-219-8264. Uh, somebody give me a call. Give me your thoughts on this, man. I'll, I'll wait a couple minutes. I will take maybe two calls if I have them. And then I'll move right on to the next topic and we will keep it rolling. But yeah, this is, um, I don't know, man, this, this, this seems too easy to me, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I get, again, I, I guess, uh, smarter minds than mine, uh, you know, tried, but anyway, let's take this call, uh, format podcast, Steve, what's up, my man? How you doing? I'm blessed brother. How are you? I'm maintaining, I'm maintaining what you got. Well, I can't take up too much of your time because I have a I have an appointment here to cook my fellow old men in our basketball league. Here in a few <laughs> minutes. But I just want to call real quick. Yeah, I agree with your uh, perspective on the All Star game. I think that that would be a that would be a good idea. Put something on the line. First, mm-hmm. like this game means something. I also had an idea. I don't know if it would be as good as this one, but I I kind of thought. Now I'm not going to say exactly like. Pro Bowl, because I know the Pro Bowl has been watered down, and it's also after the season, so it doesn't mean much. But I was also thinking, like, what would what would you think about the idea of putting the NBA All Star Game at the end of the year? Because these off season workouts where these guys get together, they play pretty hard. You, you always hear these pickup games in the mm-hmm. off season where these guys really compete. I was also thinking um, maybe put the All Star Game at the end of the year. After the postseason's finished, I mean, uh, granted, there's a there's, they're going to be they're probably not going to be as motivated because of, you know the grind is the grind mm-hmm. of the season. So the guys going to be tired out. But my my thought process was maybe put the All Star game at the end of the year where it's like you really have no distraction, you have a full off season to recover. Um, maybe that would be a decent idea where it's like there's no distraction because I think in the middle of the season. We all know the saying, you know, that the NBA season doesn't really begin until after All Star break, mm-hmm. and there's a reason for it. So it's, it seems like the timing of that game also is a deterrent for these guys really competing because they do have something at stake the second half of the season. So my thought process was, well, maybe put it at the end of the year. Maybe you, you'll see that type of competition where it's like, hey, you know, we have nothing to really lose. We have a full off season to recover. Maybe we'll play harder at the end of the year where it's like we don't have to worry about seeding. We don't have to worry about a playoff push. That's all the time. So I like the premise. The only place I would got to push back on that is it's hard because the NBA playoffs are like two months long. Right. So, yeah, like, that's yeah, that, that's the problem. So, you know, you have so many of the guys who will be all stars. You know, they're broke off, especially the further that they go in the playoff run. They, they'll, you know, they'll be exhausted. They're probably not going to want to do it. So I, I think there's yeah. that. 
just the sheer length of the playoffs. And then also with the NBA All-Star game being a break in the season, because remember, the NBA season is long with the 82 games and all that. So like with football, where the Pro Bowl was, you could do that because they only play once a week. And you right. know, there's only, what, 16 games at the time. Now you're dealing with the NBA. You got 82. So they many of these guys really value that break. Even the guys who are not all stars, they value that break in between um, all those games to kind of take a rest, get their bodies in order. And now what is the what is the all star break like 10 days now? <laughs> right. It used yeah, to be like four it's days. Over a week. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a long time. So all these guys are really taking that time to, to take that break and um, rest their bodies. So I don't think they would go for it based on that. That's true. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. I was shooting from the hip because when, when I thought about it, I, I did kind of, you know, I was thinking like, nah, I don't know if that's the answer. It's mm -hmm. a possible solution. Ultimately, I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head. You have to make, you have to make the all-star game mean something. You got the to. only way that you could do that would make, you know, imposing the idea. It's like a home court advantage for the finals. Mm -hmm. this stage. Yeah. And you would have the guys, the all-stars that are in the playoffs. They're like, Hey, we got to play. Yeah. Home field. If we happen to do it, like I want that home field advantage or that mm -hmm. home quarter. Yeah. So yeah. That makes sense. Anyway, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. My last, my last thing before I get off here, I tried saying I have to tell the cult of LeBron in the chat, which they're not that active this morning. But <laughs> it's a little early Kevin Durant for is better than LeBron James. Last night was glorious. I was working like so, me after a Baltimore Ravens game last <laughs> night. It was beautiful. So I, me I meant to respond to that in the chat when I saw it, but I was talking. But I'll, I'll say this real quick, Steve. So where you feel like Kevin Durant is better than LeBron because he works him out every time they play him, that's the same way I feel about Jokic and Embiid. You see, you see, true. you see the uh, the parallel in, there. In, I do, and in all reality, though, what I would, what my retort would be, I don't truly believe. Like, if I'm ranking my all time top, mm -hmm. I'm not putting Kevin Durant above LeBron. I can't. no, no, I, I can't. I watched the game. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm just a KD fan. No, I, I couldn't it. put him over there. But my only retort, my pushback on on that counter that you just gave would be, I would agree with you. But then I would say there's a big um, there's a big catalyst to this where, granted, there's there's always um, there's always a narrative in context. Kevin Durant does have some postseason success. Yes, that's where I would counter. Where it's like I agree with you. Like on the one on one ability, MD has that in his bag to cook a guy like you. Mm -hmm. But the overall narrative, why I would cry with Jokic, is like, man, the postseason has to mean something. Yep. We say that all the time. Yep. It's like MJ versus LeBron, and yep. we separate those two. That's where I would lean, and I'm like, man, you know, Jokic consistently shows up in the postseason. Yep. Embiid hasn't. So the overall narrative, I don't look at this as a one versus one. Like, you know, in a one on one, sure, Embiid, Embiid would get the best of Jokic. Mm -hmm. But overall, this is a team game. Jokic's basketball IQ and savviness, like, how do you put, you know, how, how do you really measure that? Because, I mean, the guy just, and I get it. That, you can see the difference when he's at full go, how that team plays around him, and the way he orchestrates things as a center, which arguably we've never seen a center orchestrate an offense like Jokic. No, I get it. It looks I get different. It. I think that's why. Uh, we're just, we're used to the, the, the physicality and dominance of these big men. Jokic is just a different he must say he's just a different center. We've never seen something like this. No doubt, no doubt. Well thanks for the call, Steve man. I appreciate you. I'm gonna go ahead and uh get on to this hey, next brother, topic, man. Thank you, you so much. You have a great week. I wish you and your family nothing but blessings. Same to you I'll man. Talk to you later, brother. All right, no doubt man. See you soon. Mm -hmm, bye bye. All right. All right, good call from my man Steve, as always. Um, okay, it uh, doesn't look like we're going to have uh, any more calls on this topic, so we're going to move right along and try to get through this stuff. Okay, so uh, next topic. Um, wow, that all-star format took a little longer than I thought. <laughs> anyway, um, next topic. We are going to – oh, wait, we got a call. Let's see. Nino, what's good, my man? Where you been? I'm good, man. It worked. I'm, I finally talked to you. I'm going to sit I hear that, you know man. What What's up? 
I want, I just on the topic, I like mm-hmm. your idea and Steve's idea for real. It got to mean something to the players. They making too much money. The risk of injury is too crazy. So can, they, can I can I ask you something about that real quick? People keep talking about they're making all this money and the risk of injuries. One, the NBA contracts are guaranteed, right? So even if they get hurt, they're still going to get paid. Two, here's the other thing. We have never seen any player of note get injured seriously in an all-star game. Where does this crap come from? This is just BS that it, people put out there. Go ahead. They getting more injured now in the regular season, I heard, it, than they used to back too. So that's true. That's the thing. I don't know. I mean, I don't know why they getting injured, but a lot of a lot of players ain't playing. And they be thinking about the next. It's a business now. I don't mm-hmm. think we can even I don't even think we can even go back to where they wasn't making no money. Like, just look at Pippen contract, one of the worst contracts for the best player. I don't think that's happening no more. I don't think everybody getting Michael Jordan money. So, we mm-hmm. just don't have to deal with that. But I, I like your idea. I don't like it for the team that's actually number one. But if that's, if, if that's the, the solution for the All-Star game, and I like Steve's idea, because I believe they will use that to get in shape or uh, or uh, just uh it wouldn't mean it wouldn't be as much as they thinking about getting injured or going to the family. Mm-hmm. And my only point would be the media should take some responsibility on it. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. I get it. <clears throat> I'm not mad at that. You got anything else, Nino, before I get out of here? It's all I like that. All right, man. Hey, thanks so much for calling. Thanks again for the super chat. Definitely appreciate your support all the time, man. Uh, people like you keep this channel going, man. I'm going to probably get uh, memberships going pretty soon here. So uh, we'll, uh, yeah, a little bit down the road, we'll talk about that. But thanks for the call, brother. I appreciate you. 